This is the Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners regular meeting agenda for Tuesday, April 30th, 1.30 p.m. We're about two minutes late here. Here at the Golden Court Community Room. Agenda, uh, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. I'll point out under number five, the second B, because it's it should be A, B, C, D, under the second B should be a C, and then the C should be a D. So just so we can keep things in order. Uh, any other topics not reasonably anticipated from anyone? The Housing Authority has nothing. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to uh, move the approval of the minutes of April 9th to our, our next meeting, May 21st. So we'll table that for now. And now we're ready for the executive director report. That Pamela? Fast. Okay. So the first item is the warrant report, which our treasurer is. All right. Uh, warrant report as of 3 7 And a total amount of $18,873.25. Is that a motion, sir? I'm reading what it was. I didn't make the motion. Okay, I'll report it. <laughs> I'll make the motion we approve. I'll second. Any discussion, Sue? Um, my discussion is on page one of one. I just wondered under 229.24 why management fees, salaries, and maintenance is lumped in. I can understand management fees and salaries being lumped in one. As a line item, why is maintenance supplies linked into the same line? I, um, it always it always has. We can um, it is broken down on the invoice. If you want more clarity on the or to break it down on the warrant report, if the group wants that, I can instruct the staff account to do that. Okay. Just, but I'm just curious, you know, because it's something totally different: management, salary, and then maintenance. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if it, I didn't realize it was always been that way. Yeah. yeah, it's one check to the Amherst Housing Authority to pay for our uh, managing agent fee, the salaries, and the maintenance supplies. I mean, that's just normal. But if you want it broken down, we can split it out. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just now that I yeah. know it's always been that way. I never yeah. realized. When, okay. when the finance subcommittee does those, we see the breakout. So it's but I can understand why you'd want to see it all broken down. Anything else, Sue? Nothing. Okay, I have nothing. Okay. Do you have anything, Rich? No, I'm all set there. Uh, I'm to vote. Do you have, okay, call for a vote. Aye. Aye. So that's three to zero. All right. And a uh, warm report at a 321.24. And uh, the amount of 6514 Three cents. Do you move? We move to make, make the motion we accept or approve. Okay, I'll second. Sue? Anything to ask? Yes. On um, 3324, mm -hmm. under low energy door replacement, is that does that mean electric door, the one over here? What do you mean by low energy the door replacement? That is, that's the patch for to repair the door of the community room okay. that we were, we waited quite a while. You did uh, the uh, just so for the public to know, our handicap accessible door was broken, so we had to get that fixed. So uh, tenants and anyone who needed those handicap services could access getting into the building. And that was with Serview Locksmith mm -hmm. licensed yeah. contractors. Anything more? Nothing more. I'll call for the vote. Aye. 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 So three to zero. The next item on the agenda is the treasurer report. Mr. Treasurer. Right, here we go here. This is a non- Treasurer report uh, March 31st, that's one. Yep. Everybody check it out. There's no vote on this anyway, is there? There is no vote. No. Um, so, but just for general discussion, uh, I'll start at my left. Sue, did you have any comments? 
for yes, discussion? Yes, for an extraordinary maintenance, I'll, is, is, does there have to be a certain amount of maintenance money-wise in order to be considered extraordinary? Because there's an extraordinary maintenance on uh, the second page of uh, March 31st, 2024, the back part. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> mm. Go ahead. No, I was just curious. In the order to be called extraordinary <coughs> maintenance, does it have to be a certain amount of money to be considered extraordinary? It's not. Oh, that's a good question. It's not like a capital project um, where there's a certain dollar amount or a threshold. What extra extraordinary maintenance is? Uh, extraordinary maintenance is we have the line item for maintenance and supplies. And you know, each year DHCD gives us or HLC gives us the budget guidelines of how much you can go up into that on the dollar amount of any line item. So if it's 7.9 percent, you have to stay within that. And then if we're planning extra maintenance things that won't fit in that, it then filters over into extra or extraordinary. Okay. So for instance, this is the budget. And the, what you're seeing, the 15000 is the approved budgeted amount for this fiscal year for extraordinary maintenance. And then the, the prorated budget amount, since we're at the end of the second quarter of our fiscal year, is $7,500. That's, that's what would be left for, you know, at halfway through the year, the mm -hmm. end of the second quarter. And the per unit amount, and then the uh, amount, the uh, actual year to date, there's no figure there. So have we had extraordinary maintenance? Uh, I thought they didn't have the 75. No, not yet. We haven't run through that. Yeah, We've yeah. That's through. what I was thinking. So that's actually budgeted amount required by the HLC. Sure. Okay. okay. Any other questions? No other. I have no questions. No questions. No questions. And our next is the quarterly report, uh, Pamela, because this is something we might need to have you explain. Because yep. so we are actually so the four hundred program is again our, um, is is our whole development. So it's both the six six seven and the seven oh five, and this is just a snapshot of where we are at the end of this second quarter, which ended March thirty first, twenty twenty four. Um, we are in good shape, um, not over, uh, we haven't overspent any items. Uh, we do have money sitting there, like you, where you were saying that extraordinary maintenance, and even the maintenance too. So if you recall, we did um, a budget line item too for a couple of the units under that vacancy turn turnover, which is also in there. So we have approval for all of that, um, and we are moving forward. Those, but right now it's um, it's all in good shape. And then you just you need to help on that. And uh, there's a signature sheet here in some other papers I weren't the quarterly consolidated modernization cost report. Is that included in this quarterly report? Or yeah, so Gary, yeah, I'm sorry, Gary DePace, our fee accountant, mm -hmm. will, he signs one of the quarterlies and then mm -hmm. I sign as um, the executive mm -hmm. director uh, the other one. And then at the year, at the end of the year is when the board, uh, when you submit the budget and then at the end of the year is when there's their certification and signatures from the board. Right now you're certifying that you did receive all the information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the uh, modernization balance sheet is that later on in our agenda because I'm or is that part of the that course? is this whole that's yes this whole the whole cap. it's a fact right and and that's the individual accounting of each project and it that that on it and is on, on and on yeah. there's a lot of line items. a lot of line items do you have any questions sir no I don't okay I don't have any questions. This was very detailed and extensive. And we have, huh? You didn't ask Rich. I have, it's still my turn. Oh. <laughs> and so now I'm asking Rich if Rich has any questions. No questions as of now, no. No. Okay. 
Let's find the end of that quarterly report, which is huge. Okay. Um, did you want to talk about the, the um, modernization as well? I think? Yes. Can okay. you get, run us through that modernization because that was extensive. Sure. So we do have a we have met multiple projects that actually have been done that are outstanding as far as us getting reimbursement from HLC. Uh, myself and John Williams um, met with the regional capital assistance team for RCAP mm -hmm. uh, to go over the five-year plan for the coming year, and we saw a bunch of the, of the projects. There's a you know, handicap ramp, um, a, a boiler, mm -hmm. and um, some project over at the 705 that are still outstanding that we just need to submit the paperwork through Cap Hub for HLC to reimburse the housing authority. So those will be cleared up. At this point, mm -hmm. they're, they're not, but they will be cleared up. So other than that, it is, it's those <coughs> projects for, um, for the vacancy initiative, which will be the two units that we're putting in a um, little bit more ADA um, features. Uh, those are being, those are being expedited. And mm -hmm. when I asked for a clear understanding of what expedited means. <laughs> how fast does what how fast does it mean? Unfortunately I was advised twenty six weeks, which is half a year. Yeah, that's a long time. But that's a fast project. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other two projects we also have money but we are doing those in house and with contractors. So those um, and then we'll build those. Yeah. So that'll help with the vacancy. So uh, uh, I'm surprised there's not more questions because this was a very detailed accounting. Uh, anything else, Sue? Nothing that I could see. Okay. And I have nothing, Rich? Nothing. Can I get a motion, please, to approve the quarterly report? Do we need to state the exact so amount? I would, I would say the quarterly, um, the quarter ending 331, 24 for okay. the 400-1 program. Sue, would you like to make that motion? Make a motion for the quarterly report to be approved for the amount of for the amount of right down here. It's right down there on the right. At that total, okay. One million two hundred forty-five thousand five hundred ninety-six dollars and thirty cents. Was that correct? Well, that's the live total. I believe. Is that what you needed to say? Yeah, yeah we, okay. we don't typically need that. Topic, okay, but that's okay. That's okay. We all know. Now, all right. Do I have I'll a second? Do, I'll do a second. But I'll call for the vote. Aye. 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 Three is zero. And then you do need, Madam Chair, a um, motion to accept the quarterly consolidated modernization report for the period. Oh. Period. Yeah, they are two separate votes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so uh, do you see? Do you have in front of you see the quarterly consolidated modernization cost report? It looks like this. There you go. Yeah, these are all the same. It looks like this. Now remember, right. you. Yeah. Here? <coughs> yes, ma'am, that is it. <clears throat> I apologize for the, if we, we were on the fly when we did this, but next time we'll both put everything together. Okay, thanks. Um, do you have any questions? Oh, well, we have to call for the vote. Okay. So, uh, do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. To approve mm -hmm. the quarterly? Quarterly uh, modernization cost report. Do you need a, a figure on that? Uh, I just say for 331. For 331. Yeah. Okay. So that would be the 109? It's actually about uh, 450. Oh, okay. 450,093.07. And for the date of? 331.24. Perfect. I'll second. Now, discussion. Sue? No discussion. I have nothing. Nothing. Call for the vote. Aye. Aye. Vote renders three to zero. Okay, hold on. Everything is kind of. There we go. All 
Okay, the next report is the unit vacancy report. Which I believe is now under here somewhere. It's behind something. It's behind something. This is very confusing. <laughs> here it is. It's, uh, you got it? No, I'm showing you. It's, it's, if you go to the very back, it's three in from the back. Three in from the back. Thank you, ma'am. From the back part. Yeah, thank you. Yep. There we go. There we go. Thank you so much. Okay. I do think there's a, an error here. I'm not sure why, but there's not five vacancies. There's uh, there's four vacancies at Golden Court. Mm -hmm. I believe one of the ones that's popping up is a test a test unit. A oh, test okay, unit okay. For in the software system. Okay. So there's uh, four at Golden Court. Again, they're all under the vacant unit turnover uh, mm -hmm. initiative. Uh, there is um, a new tenant coming in. There is five, I'm sorry. There is, because we've got a new tenant coming in? Yeah, we do have a new tenant coming in. And then okay. the other four are under the vacancy initiative um, with the full funding coming in. Two of those will be pretty quick. Uh, and then the two from Berkway, which are long-term and um, mm -hmm. just not moving capital projects. So yeah. yeah, definitely yeah. capital. So there's that. What is the actual title of the initiative that the money's from? With what is it? Something something initiative. I mean, what is the actual? How do you work? So they've been they've been using the catch for the, the vacancy initiative, but then. There's traditionally been a pocket of money that you can write to the um, to the executive office for called the uh, VUT vacant unit turnover money, and that's where they're now lumping all that money into for the most part. And then if we ever get into an issue where there's ADA, they pull from a bank of money ADA or emergency funding, um, abatement funding, or compliance, which is for you know asbestos or lending mm -hmm. it. Things and that was here. because I remember them coming out doing an inspection to, to help determine, because you asked them to, to come do an inspection so we could get this pot of money, correct? Yes, if you could recall, there was that art, an article that came out with WUR that ex exposed you know, the lack of funding at housing mm -hmm. authorities and how um, vacancies were, were stacking up because of both the issues with CHAMP and the lack of money. Um, to HLC, fix the apartment. To fix the apartment, and HLC did mm -hmm. um, a really, they've been working to improve CHAMP over the mm -hmm. years, and they did a couple of final tweaks. Uh, I'm sure it's not final, they're always yeah. tweaking, but it made a vast difference, vast and that difference. greatly improved that, and now it's just the, the money issue. And there, while we seem to have the money, there's a lot of, there's a lot of red tape in the money. Uh, it's, and it takes time. Again, you know, the rush units, 26 weeks. So it's frustrating, but it's it's going to improve our facility by waiting for that money. Because Some housing authority didn't take advantage of it. Yeah, that's, of them, but yeah, we but absolutely did. Yeah. Is this vacancy initiative totally under the Laura Healy program, or was it something that existed before Laura Healy was in office? So there was vacant unit turnover. Prior, that's always it's always been a thing, and then the vacancy initiative came up uh, just recently. Just recently, yeah. And then some of these units and some of the housing authorities, just for background, really couldn't be leased out because they were in such poor condition. Isn't that true? Um, yes, because yes. the housing authority has to follow state sanitary guidelines, yes. just like any other landlord mm -hmm. would. Yeah. So. Yeah. Definitely. So this will correct those, so those units can come back online and be rented out for all these people on the waiting list. Right, right. Plus, okay. you want to you want to rent out nice units to folks. You don't. Wanna you don't want to. Yeah. yeah. Nice stuff. Okay. So let's see. We don't need a board vote on that. Yep. So we're at tenants account receivable report. So that is uh, we are continuing to work on um, tenants account receivable or TAR. So again, the top of the the top of the the graph shows money that is outstanding, and it is still too high, but we are working on it. So between both the six six seven and the seven oh fives, it's twenty one thousand two hundred and fifty six dollars 
and 78 cents. You can see that there's a good portion of that that is under the 667, which is this development here. Um, we are uh, aggressively working those, really trying. We were, I was in housing court yesterday for the entire morning. Um, with one of our tenants on that, and we are we're really working trying to get services in place, um, funding for the tenant to really try to so to preserve. so that tenant can keep their apartment. Yes, we're trying to preserve and have the support she needs. Absolutely, but also okay. get get the the rent paid for the mm -hmm. housing authority. The bottom part of the the graph. I mean, apologize. Uh, $4,600 at 667, $2,700, 705, and 34.56. Uh, we do separate out payment agreements from fraud agreements. Regular payment agreements are somebody's behind or they um, they come to the housing authority. Um, I think I've mentioned it before in Belchertown. I've, I've, they're really good about using repayment agreements. They know when they, they come up with an unexpected or they know if my car is going to need tires i can't afford tires and rent. my mm -hmm. rent can you put me in a repayment agreement and we do it right you know yeah. spread right. out over yeah. five months and they're good to go yeah. fraud sounds very um strong but that's the word they use if we have fraud repayments the housing authority gets to retain um the, the fraud payment that they find and fraud can be anything from um Unreported income, it's, it's unreported income. Basically, it's unreported yeah. income. Basically. Yeah. So, but these are these are folks that are in repayment agreements mm -hmm. for ten thousand seven hundred sixty-five dollars. So there's no adverse effect to the tenant mm -hmm. or to the housing authority through an audit. Now, so I want to I want to just uh, just a question, just to consolidate this. On August, I mean, I'm sorry. On April 9th, we voted to write off an amount, yes. but. That would not be reflected on this because this one is generated as of March. Oh, right, right. So that that figure will look better. It'll look better at our next meeting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that reminder. Yeah, okay. Now we don't need a vote on that. No, so are there questions. any other questions? Though I don't want to move too fast. No questions. Okay. All right. So okay. the next. Item on the agenda is the capital plan report for the ARPA chimney repair Golden Court project number 117084 low bid recommendation. Yes. So you should have a letter in your packet. Yep, here it is. Is it from Roy Brown? Yes. And this is the chimney project mm -hmm. that we'll be doing. Um, and he has done a background um, and, and has found that the uh, Galvin and Sons Masonry out of Hadley, so a local company that's nice, is below bid bidder. Wonderful. And you can see the vast difference in the bids. They were enormous. What would cost such a vast? I, it might be, I mean, uh, well, actually, made from coming from Amherst, that's close, but um, so it is. I, I do want to point out. So there is what Roy Brown does, or what what happens in the projects is either there's a scope of service, mm -hmm. and there's it, it's a requirement of you are going to do mm -hmm. these things and use these projects. So they're or all pro uh, materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're using. Everyone is bidding on the same thing. It's just it probably comes down to their labor rates or. Mm -hmm. um, but Galvin's and Sons did pass the background check. Wonderful. And that's who he's recommending, but we do need a board vote to move forward. Right. Um, can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. We accept the the contract for uh, the evidence on basement. I'll second. For, for the amount. The amount. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. For amount of about nineteen thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars. I'll second. Discussion. How many chimneys will this include? Uh, every chimney in the building, they're going to go around and make sure they're po you know, pointed correctly and every chimney. Safe. In, in, yeah. uh, in Golden Court. Right. Not correctly. Do, do That's every other building. building. So how many yeah. chimneys so will that be? Well, we have. So oh, there's two chimneys on the building. On the building. No, there's one for the boiler. One for the boiler. Just one for the boiler. One for every other building. So, so every other building. So. 
I can like and then the chimney for the community in my building it has one. I mean, you want to start here, mine because you got the boiler. Well, you got this one. I live right over it. Right over it. Well, you have this one here too. So yeah. So I think it's five. If if I'm thinking, am I right? If that one's got one, it would be five. Yeah, five to the community. So it's five. Yeah. And, and this was generated because of an inspection, and we're required to do this. So it's been part of the capital plan to get these chimneys redone. Yeah, and then they will serve. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, they will serve for years. But it's just a very expensive project. So, OK, can we have a vote? Or wait a minute, did you have anything else? No more questions. Yeah. Rich? No, nothing. I got nothing. nothing. So I made that motion. Yes, and it's been seconded, so I call for the vote. Aye. 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 Three to zero. Wonderful. Okay. And the next thing would be the work order report. Pamela? And this is uh, showing work orders for the month of March. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just, you know, plugging away the, the on-call and uh, emergency. Mm -hmm. reports but they are you know they're still here every day we st uh, one of our maintenance men starts the day here and ends the day here mm -hmm. and then on um, Thursday there is a work order day for tenant requests that are not an emergency exactly yeah so um, it doesn't require a vote but uh, Sue do you have any questions or no questions. Okay, I will just oh, I'll just ask Rich on the last. I'm just looking at the report. A lot of plumbing stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of hot toilets. Yeah. No and, more water, no heat. Yeah, and then I believe on the uh, Wharton report too, we had Fontaine coming in mm -hmm. for the no heat. So mm -hmm. two, there were three yeah. different bills that we ended up paying them. So I can say that that. Uh, was due to the a pinhole leak in a, in a pipe. That was part of that pinhole leak in a pipe thing. Right. Down there in the building seven, I think it was. Right. So, but I have to say, from looking at these for the past year and three quarters, the, um, you know, tenant generated non-emergent requests have really decreased in quantity. Um. But, but they're, they're, the tenants are very good at calling in what they need to have. No, no, I, I'm that. saying it, but fewer things seem to be going wrong or something because yeah. because I can remember these work order reports being pages long. Right. And now, I mean, we just have like pretty simple stuff. All of the, I'm, I don't know if it's all and I don't, it doesn't tell me what I know that uh, no heat or hot water no hot water you know that kind of thing was likely generated from that pinhole leak in the boiler just because I'm down there and I you know do that was happening yeah. but but really and the other thing I want to say is now that we can see what date the work order was requested, be it emergency or on, you know, on-call emergency or non-emergent request, these are getting wrapped up pretty quick. Yes. Absolutely. So I think you might have a Cracker Jack maintenance team. Thank you. <laughs> we can, we can. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, it's, they're getting wrapped up pretty quick. I'm surprised. Well, I'm pleased. Yeah. Any other questions, too? No questions. Rich? I have nothing, no. Okay, we don't need to vote on that. Okay, the next <coughs> item is board correspondence. Uh, this does not require discussion or a vote. It's just the chair's report on communication with whoever that contacted me. So, the first item up is that uh, Pamela and I have been invited by Housing and Economic Development Committee here in Hadley uh, two, uh, two purposes, uh, to present on the uh, new rules and regs coming out of the state that create a pathway for local housing authorities 
and a possibility to build new housing. So that just came out from um, uh, e Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities not long ago. And so uh, Housing and Economic Development Committee is quite interested in what we could manage to do here. And the, uh, the second one is we'll be asking them uh, to consider if they know anybody, because we need more board members. We'll be down to, you know, two board members unless somebody steps up, right? So, uh, somebody steps up. Somebody <laughs> steps up. We need, we basically need three people to step up, right? So we need, uh, or need at least one. Well, so you can have a quorum. So when you have a quorum, yeah. So we have a need for board members interested in taking on these sorts of tasks because we now have a, a pathway. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, correct, Pamela? Oh, what, to uh, the for No, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, and it's going to take some creativity, some innovation, some, I think, um, time and rolling up the sleeves to really get into it, right? So we would love to have board members who feel like they can take that sort of thing on because what a benefit to Hadley to have new housing. Okay, so the, the second item for board correspondence is um, I was contacted by the Chair of Community Preservation. Now I sit on that board, I'm the housing representative, I mean on that committee, and I'm the housing representative for that committee. But she had been contacted by a select board member uh, to inquire about, quote, extra money from the window project, and should that extra money be returned to the town instead of being used to pay the admin fee that we approved last April 9th at the last board meeting. The original question uh, was brought by the former or present, I'm not really sure, select board member who had been appointed liaison to the Housing Authority who did not reach out to me, but contacted another select board member who then went to talk to the chair of uh, uh, community preservation. Anyway, the chair of community preservation researched the whole thing. She looked closely at the 75,000 uh, and determined that the 75,000 we got uh, as recommended by the community preservation committee uh, that, and the town voted for that that 75000 was only spent directly on windows. Um, and she also said it was very nice for her to say that the ab application from ha Hadley Housing Authority for this window project was very detailed. Uh, the plan was detailed and the invoice uh, that was submitted to her would have been last fall, right? Uh, was very detailed and so that there is no question about quote extra money and that kind of thing that's not even in it so that felt good to be able to work through that kind of thing very nicely so that's it for that doesn't require discussion or anything so now we're to commissioners discussion and the first item on commissioners discussion is payment of invoices by electronic signature. Um, so here's the thing. Rich and I for, I think, well over a year now. Quite a while, yeah. Yeah, have been meeting every two weeks to go through every single invoice to make sure that the, the invoices are appropriate, the amounts, the et cetera, and the warrant report. We review, we look at every invoice, make sure it's on the warrant report correctly, et cetera, and what the invoice was, uh, the money was used to pay for, it's appropriate on the invoice, the whole thing. We do that every two weeks. We have not found any substantial problem. There was one time a vendor uh, 
was training up a new a clerical staff in their office who accidentally hit the wrong button, but that was caught. So, and it would have been caught on audit pretty quick after. So, for us, this is an exercise in, it, it's not a good use of, of time. There's other things we need to be working on. And so we're proposing that we still meet and look at the invoices and, and warrant reports, but in order to get bills paid quicker, that we use what we had been using all through COVID, which was electronic signatures. So, um, well, Rich and I are both signatories for the account, and we would prefer to use electronic signatures to get these bills paid quicker. There was recently, I got it in my email, an email from executive office asking housing authorities to pay their bills quicker. And that kind of generated this. So I would make a motion that we return to electronic signatures so that these invoices can be paid quickly. We will still review them. You, the whole entire board will review every single warrant report and any question will be answered if, if we need to look further into something, we will. But we need to get our bills paid. So are you saying that you're going to pay them before you look at them or look at them and then pay them? We what? have always paid them before we looked at them throughout COVID because bills have to be paid. Delays cause problems finding contractors willing to work for housing authorities. That's our problem. That's a problem throughout the state. So uh, I'm saying we pay the bills. Everybody we do business with, if they want further business, they'll work with us if they make an error on the bill. They will. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, we can probably pick it up, you know, after we... Mm -hmm. It's not even a make. It right. is picked up. Yeah. Right, because you still have to approve the warrant report. Mm -hmm. So the warrant report, we can, um, if there's, you need more detail in that, we mm -hmm. can put it in that. Mm -hmm. or, and we can also just attach the invoices to the warrant report yeah. to your board. Yeah. And then exactly. you approve that every single month so you see it right away. There's all kinds of ways of doing it that don't cause the commissioners to spend time doing something that's it's just not needed because we are already reviewing. You know, the whole board's reviewing that warrant report. And if you want invoices attached to the warrant report, we can certainly do that. And there is a process the housing authority goes through before paying the invoice. Yeah. Too, if it's you know if it's the contractor that's doing the lawn, that comes in. Um, the director of facilities reviews the invoice, signs off on it. The staff accountant reviews the invoice, mm -hmm. signs off, signs off on it, and then I ultimately sign off on it too before the commission. Before the commission so comes to us, so it's got all these eyes looking at it. Mm -hmm. So. I make a motion that we allow electronic signatures. And again, uh, Rich and I are signatories. Pamela is a signatory. Right, and you do, our, our checks require two signatures. Two signatures, so it can't yeah. Just be, it can't be, yeah, it's not, it's not just Pamela signing. It's got to have right. like board members. You know. So uh, that is my motion, that we allow electronic signatures uh, to pay our bills in a more timely fashion. I'll do the second. Thank you, Rich. Any further discussion? I, I think I would need more time to think about that if I could table it and uh, not, not take a vote. I need to think about it, not, not vote at the moment. Uh, to me, it seems unnatural to pay something without, and you know, just in general in life, it, it's unnatural to pay somebody because we're worried that they won't get their payment in a timely manner. I'm sure that the housing authority's been pretty good about always paying their, their bills when they're due. So to me, it seems unnatural to pay somebody without looking at first. To me, looking at it first, then paying makes more, more sense. I, I can, yeah, I can, I can understand that. Um, but I will point out to you, we have had to pay um, late fees 
because of not paying our bills in a timely way. Okay. Can I offer two? I mean, I, I can absolutely understand the trepidation there, uh, but it is, a, it is an industry standard too, because it's mm -hmm. not just the housing authority that does that. We've had a commissioner in the past that worked for the city of Northampton, mm -hmm. and they use electronic signatures paying ahead of time. Um, we have a family member for a resident that's come to a board meeting mm -hmm. and said that the other two housing authorities that we use mm -hmm. um, do that and the executive office of housing. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be the bookkeeper for Amherst Housing Authority looks at these, she sends them to the department head responsible for generating that amount who knows all the details about the purchase, be it a contract purchase or whatever. And it is verified by multiple eyeballs before it gets here. And I can understand uh, commissioners wanting to see the actual uh, invoices and the um, uh, warrant report side by side together. And I can, I can understand that. It's just that it's causing problems. It is causing problems. We have had I can't remember if it's two or three late fees because of the timing of the bill and meeting only every two weeks. So nothing is going to get paid without these eyes looking at it. And as Pamela said, the board, she can make sure that the board gets a copy of the actual invoices attached to the warrant report. So you too, which is something you don't do now, so that you too can see the actual invoice with the warrant report. And can I just offer too, so in the board training, and so the, mm -hmm. the board has a very big responsibility for fiduciary, a fiduciary responsibility. So that you have the oversight of, of the monies that are spent. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not to be making sure that we didn't pay the wrong kilowatt hours right. to National Grid. Right. When you take the the training on it, which is extensive, and you have to keep going back because there's mm -hmm. it's so extensive you can't learn it in in one of the sessions. But you're gonna you're looking at at your warrant report and you're looking for why am I paying this staff member extra extra money? Oh, there was. Um, a, mileage that was paid but Hadley doesn't have any employees so there's you're not looking for that you're looking for how many why why do we keep buying stoves why are we buying um, appliances why is there a, a check cut to back in the day uh, we had a guy in Belchertown that mowed a, a field mm -hmm. once a year and that always came up at the board meeting who's this not a real name Mr. Brown that we're paying this mm -hmm. money to and it's you have to right. explain those things. So it's you know the, the vast majority of what is on our warrant report and what Hadley pays for is utility bills, contractors yeah. that have the oil. lawn mowing service. Yeah, the oil when the oil removal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are those are really mm -hmm. what you're what you're paying. We're not supposed to get that as a board. We we are not going, well, why is the kilowatt hours up in building four? And if that's and not what we're doing. And I would also, offer, I'm sorry to interrupt, I would also offer that what you really should be looking at is the management agreement yes. invoice from Amherst and say, okay, so this is, this is what our agreement says is the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, maintenance hours. We always, we charge mm -hmm. extra for maintenance hours. Does that look appropriate for the number of work orders that they're doing? Exactly. See? So those are the ways that you're really yeah. kind of, because that that's where your your controlling costs. And when you why can't you still pay something electronically in a timely manner where it, they both can be done to make some board members happy and then you make yourself happy so nothing's late. Why can't it be done done in conjunction with one another? So there isn't any. So that's actually a good point it too, is. and it's something that I uh, that that would require a board vote too. Like, go ahead and pay the electric bill ahead of time. Uh, well, put it on don't automatic say payment. It's, yeah, yeah, put it on automatic. Automatic payment. Yeah. Automatic payment. The only thing I will point out, and this is very minor, um, and I think we we've, we've resolved that issue. You know, we had tight reserves here in Hadley, mm -hmm. but the checking account is is easier to balance. But 
I was I did kind of chuckle when I got the, the email also from the executive office mm -hmm. saying pay, pay your bills on time. And if you'll look at our treasury report, it's funds paid and not reimbursed. Yeah. And if you recall, <laughs> we waited almost a year to get yeah. a subsidy from yeah. the yeah. So pot, pot kettle. Pot, um, yeah. But there, that is a good point that we could be paying somebody like National Grid or Eversource ahead of time. Because yeah, especially coming. if it's going to be the same amount every month. It's a set fee that's coming out. We do. We, I month. think you're right about that. We have a lot of vendors that we could pay electronically. Yes. We could cut electronic checks if, if we don't have, like, there, there's one that's it's always electronic payment every month. That's yeah. the only way they accept payment. But we have other ones we could get the bank to cut the check or whatever and get it done. And you are correct. But, but I think you would like to vote on it. Yeah, you but isn't people. your question, you want the at least the finance subcommittee to see the actual invoice and approve it before we sign the check to go out, and that's the delay, Sue. That's the delay. If there's been if there's been a constant delay where it's a problem, you said it's happened here and there. If it was a constant delay, that it had to be something to worry about. But because of the fact, I don't feel that it's been constant to the point where I would want to vote yes on that particular. If it was something that, and if a utility company was to change the rate that you're being mm -hmm. taken out monthly automatically, if that's to change, you would bring it up at a meeting, absolutely, and it would be automatically taken for a, a year or so until. So yeah, the way it worked before in the in the uh, prior to COVID, except for um, it's my understanding because I've only been at Amherst for five years, but Amherst has been doing this for a good number of years. Yeah, in Belchertown, and I believe what Hadley used to do too is at the actual board meeting, mm -hmm. they brought the warrant report with with the checks to be signed, and you spent time during the board meeting doing it because what's happening now is mm -hmm. the subcommittee is meeting with the staff accountant who's coming in a half hour early. I just mm -hmm. want to point that out again. Yeah, um, and so it's taking time for both, twice a month. Yeah. And that's, that's a, that is much. And it, it, what, what ended up happening before is you might not, you've been here a very long time, but you wouldn't have known this piece. What was happening before is uh, in Hadley was the e e executive director was having to go chase down board members to sign checks. We cannot do that. If we want to get people on this board with a skill set that can move us forward, I mean, I think you would like a nice apartment, right? And we would like to make more housing. And <laughs> we, no, no, you've lived in your apartment a very long time, right? Okay. Right. But if we're going to move Hadley, if we're going to move Hadley Housing Authority forward and be able to, and it's not going to be quick, that's for sure, but even maybe create more housing for all these people, we need to take some of these time-consuming tasks that are duplicative in nature and make it easier for people to serve on the board instead of harder. See what I'm saying? I understand that, what you're saying. Yeah, okay, thank you. Well, I understand that, um, well, first of all, do you have any more questions after all this we said? No, I don't believe so. Rich? No question, I am gonna call for a vote. Sorry. I will call for a vote <coughs> that payment of invoices are done by electronic signature. Second that, but you'll say yep. well we've already yeah. yeah. So now we have a vote of two to I still don't feel like I want to is your vote yes, no, or I abstain? Well, you've been present for all the discussion, so right. it's so I feel, yes I feel okay. that I have to say no, you so can't. No, she can say she no has a fiduciary wants. responsibility. No, no, she can say no if she wants. Yeah. You can, okay. that's right. You, yeah, she, yeah, it's okay to say no. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, just to make sure that everybody feels comfortable with it, would you like me to bring the invoices with the warrant going forward for a while so you can see yeah, it? Would that help you? Well, I'm, as I did, I'm new to finance myself, oh, so no. I, um, I feel good about it, but I would like to know more about yeah. finance. The, uh, I, and again, I, I caution redact Things would be redacted that needed to okay, be Okay, it's extremely time consuming and we have a lot to get through. Yeah. So that's, that was my concern. Okay. So the next thing is uh, the annual plan. Uh, so we're actually in the in the midst of that now again. Um, the first part of it is the five-year plan of the five-year capital projects. Mm -hmm. Again, John Williams and I met this past week with uh, RCAP. Mm -hmm. um, they're putting together a fancy dancy um, spreadsheet, mm -hmm. and I will be meeting with the tenants next to talk about capital projects mm -hmm. and what they see and how, the order of things that we're doing. And then uh, I still have to meet with the executive office and put right. all of this together uh, in that template. If you all recall, there's a template mm -hmm. that we use yeah. each year. And then we'll we'll put that on the calendar. I believe I believe we have to have it in by June 30th. Yeah. But there's a 45-day window that yeah. it has to be posted. So I'll have concrete dates for the next meeting. Wonderful. Of how the annual plans. But um, we actually do have a good a good pool of money. So. It's wonderful. Yeah. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, any, any questions about the annual plan? Sure. No. Yeah. Rich? Okay. So, um, agenda item 5C is next meeting date is May 21st, 2024 at 11 a.m. I would like to go ahead and schedule the following meeting because we're We'll, we'll schedule it. We don't know if we'll have a, a quorum to even hold the meeting. But the last Tuesday in June is June 25th at 11 a.m. Does that work for those of us that? Yep. June 25th at 11 a.m. Fine with me. All right. And don't forget to write down May 21st. I have, I have it right here. Right okay, here. wonderful. Um, items for future agenda. I have one. And that is. The feedback I've gotten so far, I, I have had some discussions with, with people that might be interested or know people that might be interested to serve on the board. Of course, they'd either, you know, they, I don't, I don't know how that would work. But anyway, um, but the overwhelming consensus is we need to change to, to the uh, virtual format for our meetings because. People have jobs. They cannot leave their jobs to drive here to an attend a meeting and then drive back to their job. They can't do it. But they can take an hour or so out of their work day if it's on Zoom or Teams. So the idea would be that we would switch to Zoom or Teams, what, whichever hybrid it would be. We use both. Yeah, both. Like, which would be something I would be interested Yeah, could we do both? Could we do hybrid? We could do hybrid. And that way, yes. We can. I can bring it over to the Owl for you guys. This is a well. Oh yeah. This is well. You guys are in a good spot and very, very. It's an all right room. You could definitely get away with um, using an Owl for your readings. That's the thing that when it, when it it looks like an hour, but when you speak, it goes to you and then. It really? Yeah. yeah. It's very good. Thank it's you. Pretty awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So when you guys have that information, you know, just let me know. We'll let you know. Yeah. But, so yeah, so that's the question. Now, now this is just for discussion, but I want to put it on the agenda to discuss for May 21st while we still have Rich. Um, that's your last meeting, Rich, right? The 21st of May? So, um, uh, but we'll, we'll need to vote on that because we're going to have a really hard time finding anybody willing to serve without being able to appear remotely. Okay, so um, we have no one here from the public. Well, except for Alex. We wish the Bruins best of luck tonight. <laughs> Pardon me? We wish the Bruins best of luck tonight. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, but that wasn't on the agenda. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so um, call for adjournment. Um, I make a motion we adjourn. I'll second. Vote three to zero, right?